Comfloor is a great balance between strength to support the wet concrete load, unpropped up to 5 metres, and lightness, with two people able to handle the longest lengths. The route to market for Comfloor is through Composite Floor Decks Limited. Nationwide they can supply direct for self-install or their specialty, a fully installed option including installation of decking, shear studs and edge trimming, ready for the placement of reinforcing and concrete. Composite Floor Decks Limited work professionally to achieve the project's time and safety targets. Unique to Composite Floor Decks Limited is the use of safety netting. This provides a physical barrier for both people falling from the structure and workers below are protected from objects falling from above. The netting also allows workers to move freely about untethered, speeding up the construction process. For more details on their offer, visit them at www.studwelders.co.nz Alternatively, Comfloor can be installed by anyone with suitable building experience. An overview of the installation process follows. For details not covered within this presentation, please refer to the relevant Comfloor product brochure. These are available for downloading at www.comfloor.co.nz. There are two fundamental points to always keep in mind with regards to installing Comfloor that, if overlooked, can cause safety and performance problems. Prop first. If used, temporary propping is best installed prior to laying the Comfloor sheets. Note, however, if using Composite Floor Decks Limited for installation, the temporary propping will interfere with the placement of the safety netting they use. Please contact Composite Floor Decks Limited in this instance. They'll advise if propping can be safely omitted during the Comfloor installation stage, as often it's required during the concreting phase only. Never cut sheets. Comfloor must never be cut shorter than that supplied or specified on the drawings without first consulting a Comfloor representative. Cutting will reduce the spanning ability of the com floor and may lead to larger deflections during the pour or actual sheet failure under load. And never cut com floor mid span under any circumstances. Com floor 60 and com floor 80 are installed in exactly the same manner. The Comfloor 210 installation process differs however and is addressed separately within this presentation. The strip end cap is most often used and is installed before the Comfloor is laid. For best results when using the strip end cap, the supporting surface should be smooth and free of debris. Comfloor strip end caps are fitted flush to the inside face of the beam or concrete. Fixings are at third points, located so they don't interfere with the seating of the com floor sheets. A great benefit of the end cap strip is that they act as a set out template for the com floor, negating the need for coverage or out of square checks otherwise required. The singular end caps are fitted after the com floor sheets are installed. They are cut from com floor closure angles, supplied in 2.4 metre lengths bundled together. Bundles are cut on site into 200 mm lengths using a metal rated cutting disc. Masonry blocks must be solid filled and developed structural strength before laying and pouring the com floor. Care is also required to ensure the grout is smoothed off, providing a flat surface for fixings and the reinforcing bars do not clash with the com floor seating area. Fix the com floor into the grout to avoid unsightly damage to the block work. For best results in masonry, pre-drill and hammer in masonry anchors, one fixing per sheet. Although less is possible, it's recommended the minimum seating for both the side and end of the com floor sheet is 50mm onto steel and 70mm onto masonry. 
This serves both as an additional safety factor, but more importantly avoids the need for precise measuring during installation. The first com floor sheet is always laid with the overlap edge facing the starting point. Com floor must be fixed to the permanent structure along the side lap at a maximum of one meter centers. As each sheet is laid, it is fixed to the permanent support, one fixing per sheet. Please ensure that the drive pins fixing the sheet do not clash with any future shear stud placements. An ideal location is at the base of the rib up stand as shown here. They are then tech screwed together through every second pre-punched hole, resulting in fixing at no more than one meter centers. Often shear studs are used to create a composite design, meaning a much smaller beam can be used than for a gravity beam design. Shear studs are best installed in a through deck fashion, that is, studs are welded on site after the com floor is installed. This results in a faster installation sequence and the com floor sheets act as a bracing diaphragm to the structural steel during the construction phase. The top flange of the steel beam must be unpainted and free from dirt, debris and moisture to ensure an effective weld is achieved. Comfloor 210 is typically installed as a single span only. That is, the sheets tend to span beam to beam or wall to wall and not over the top of multiple beams or walls as is best practice for Comfloor 60 and Comfloor 80. To fully utilise the benefits of Comfloor 210, it's usually incorporated within the height of an asymmetric beam support system, thereby reducing overall storey height. Numerous beam configurations are possible with Comfloor 210. For best results, contact your Comfloor representative and discuss your project's needs. Asymmetric beams focus the tensile capacity towards the bottom of the beam, maximising performance while keeping the overall floor height to a minimum. Fabricated asymmetric beams can currently be sourced from Steltec, Cellbeam and Fabsec. When installing Comfloor 210, the end support diaphragms are always used and are installed first as they're a vital structural component that supports and maintains the correct shape of the Comfloor 210 under construction loading. The Comfloor 210 end support diaphragms are fixed down at third points so as not to interfere with the seating of the Comfloor sheets. Please note the orientation of the end support diaphragm as this will affect installation if not correct. The first sheet of Comfloor 210 must be laid so the edge with the punched holes faces the starting point. The edge lap is fixed at 600mm centres with heavy duty drive pins. Subsequent sheets are then placed down on the preceding one so the pre-punched holes are always visible from above. As each sheet is installed, they are tech screwed into the top flap of the end support diaphragm. For spans under 6.5 metres, all sheets can be laid before any side lap fixings are installed. For sheets over 6.5 metres, one shear bond clip is tech screwed at mid-span as each sheet is installed. This ensures worker safety and sheet integrity during the installation sequence. Once all sheets are installed, the Comfloor 210 is fixed to the beam through every trough with heavy duty drive pins. And shear bond clips are fixed at 350mm centres, that is through every pre-punched hole. Comfloor 210 requires a reinforcing bar in every trough to achieve the required shear bond characteristics, the size of which is determined by the Comfloor design software. The rebar is held in position using a standard 100mm circular spacer. Placement of mesh completes the basic Comfloor slab and is now ready for the concrete. The minimum end seating for Comfloor 210 is 50mm, but to facilitate installation tools, 
concrete flow and vibrator access, a 75mm shelf should be provided. This is to ensure a 25mm clear vertical access zone is available between the top flange of the beam and the com floor sheet. Where this is impractical, the top of the com floor can be cut out locally, but care is needed to avoid cutting the end support diaphragm. This extra cutting work should always be itemised and allowed for when seeking quotes or pricing any Comfloor 210 installation.